This is my August 2020 beer, whatever you want to call it. I hope these reviews are helpful, fun, entertaining even. All right, let's get going. So the first beer I want to talk about this month is Last Hand Brewing Fuzzy Luscious IPA. This was actually a gift from a friend and fan of the show, Donovan. Shout out. This is a juicy, hazy IPA, and actually this is probably the most hazy IPA I've ever tried. I took a picture of it, I'll put it up there. It was almost as hazy as unfiltered apple juice. It was crazy. It was it was nuts. It was very opaque, if we're gonna use that word. This was also exactly my style of IPA. None of the sweetness, none of the malts. It was 100% dank, hoppy, piney goodness. It was absolutely a pleasure to drink. I would 100% try another beer from this brewery. This is a Texas brewery in Austin Hill Country. And they say on their website that they pay big attention to little details. And I think that this beer is evocative of that concept, definitely. I can tell that a lot of care was put into this beer because it just worked. I gave this four out of five stars. I really liked it. This month I actually really liked a lot. This is like the kind of the opposite of July, where in July I hated everything, in August I felt like I loved almost everything. With the exception of 903 Brewing Sasquatch Chocolate Milk Stout. What a transition! This is actually an Imperial Stout, so it's about 10%. I took about three sips of and I didn't finish it. My boyfriend wouldn't even finish it and he's a big drinker. Definitely in the few sips I had, definitely tasted like chocolate milk, like straight up, except super alcoholic chocolate milk. I didn't rate this because it seemed unfair to rate a beer that I that I only had a few sips of. Okay, so Oscar Blues is a Colorado brewery originally, Lions, Colorado. They now have several locations and one of them is here in Austin. They say they're the original craft brew in a can and they love cans and I love cans. So if we both love cans, you know, it's a match made in heaven. This was their old chub, which was a scotch, scotch ale, uh, 8% alcohol. I liked this beer. Usually when I'm doing these reviews, what I do is I taste the beer, I make all my notes about the flavor, all my original thoughts, and then I go back at the end of the month or later on and look up, you know, what the brewery actually intended with the beer. Uh, other people's reviews and kind of compare to see if, you know, am I saying what is, you know, basically fact of what the beer tasted like or am I just like off in left field somewhere? This one, I said that it had a smoky finish and I thought that I was completely insane because it was very subtle. It was not like Live Oak has a beer called the Grodziski, which is a smoked beer. That is like heavy smoke. 100%. Rauch beer, I think, is uh, the German word for it. I looked it up, they actually do smoke some of the hops or malts used in this. I was right. And that's really all I care about is being right. Uh, I gave it three out of five stars. Throwing these cans, it feels so good. It feels like I'm shedding skin. Gaia Berra by Cigar City Brewing. They're based in Tampa, Florida. I liked this beer, sort of. I think this could really be a big hit for a lot of people. It's 5.5% ABV and it's 50 IBU and it is very citrusy. And what this beer succeeded at was giving you sort of chapters of flavor. So you sip initially it's lime and then in the middle it's orange and then at the end it's a berry finish. And so it has a nice progression of flavor that isn't muddled. It's not like all these flavors at once. And so that I think is definitely a success because having that all at once would be too much. And then what would the finish be like, you know? Ultimately for me, I gave it three out of five stars because I just didn't enjoy it all that much. But I do think other people who prefer more citrus forward pale ales and IPAs could really enjoy this one. And I would like to try more from them. This is Rhinelander Brewing Thirsty Miner American IPA. This brewery is owned by a single woman and she does it all. She's a self-taught food scientist, which good for her. She judges beer competition. She's been drinking beer since she was 18 because she's from Canada. She even helps with the can artwork, which looking at the can, I don't like. I also didn't like this beer. I wanted to like it because I really appreciate a lady getting in the mix. Craft beer seems very male dominated. This beer just wasn't very good. It was very malty, very caramelly. Don't try it. It's not good. I don't have the can for this next beer, which was a Berliner Weisse by Independence Brewing. It's their Red Bud Berliner Weisse. I've been getting really into this style of beer this summer. It might be my favorite beer. It's basically a sour wheat beer, similar to a Goza. The difference being a Berliner Weisse and Goza originated in two different places 
places in Germany, and also the alcohol percentage is traditionally different. So Berliner Weisse, they hover around 3%. Goza are 4 or 5%. Today in America, judging from what I consume myself, there doesn't seem to be a clear adherence to those alcohol standards with the exception of the Austin Einhorn. All of the Berliner Weisse that I have tried have been 4 to 5%. This one is just like a by the books Berliner Weisse style. So they accomplish a nice tart, lemony flavor. The lemony flavor comes from lactobacillus, which is pretty cool. I absolutely loved this beer. It was nicely carbonated, nicely tart, nicely lemony, very light, very summery, and I gave it five out of five stars. So moving on to Three Nations Brewing GPA German Pale Ale. This one was a little strange for me. I was excited to try it because it is a German pale ale. I thought, you know, an old world pale ale might be fun because I really like pale ales. It was just a little malty and sweet for me, and then and finished really bitter. What I wrote down in my notes is that I would never buy a six pack of this, but if somebody gave me one, I would drink it. it. It's just okay. I gave it three out of five stars. It wouldn't be a beer review without Avery Brewing. I love Avery Brewing. They're in Colorado. I've discovered them on this journey of trying way too many beers in a month. I swear, next month, we're gonna only do Oktoberfest. We're only gonna do pumpkin beers. Like I financially, physically, and mentally cannot keep reviewing this many beers each month. The first one was the El Goza, German style sour ale. It was very good. I liked it very much. It was super frothy, super fizzy. It had a nice, good deal of lime flavor. It almost reminded me of like a spiked seltzer. Definitely more robust in flavor than that. Definitely, you know, hints of beer flavor. It really didn't seem super beer-like. I think if you're somebody who doesn't love beer, this could be a really good first or second beer to try. I gave it four out of five stars. Also from Avery, I tried the Lilikoi Capolo. This is a Belgian style white ale influenced by the brewer's time in Hawaii, where I guess there is a fruit called Lilikoi. This is specifically passion fruit infused with spices. It was a very, very, very weird experience drinking this beer. I did like it, sort of. It starts out very juicy, a little sweet, a little tart. You get the fruit flavor. It finishes with a little bit of coriander flavor, but it's just a lot going on. Like it was very cool to try. It was an overload for my senses. It was a little bit too much. And um, for that reason, I gave it three out of five stars. If you have access to this beer and you like drinking beer, I think you should try this just because it is very weird. It's very out there. Maybe the most unique beer I've had since I started doing this. We've got three beers from Martin House. I chose not to try some of the Martin House beers. Salsa Verde beer doesn't need to exist. This is the Key Lime Pie. So many words, ready? Lime Sour Ale brewed with Graham crackers and lactose. This beer starts heavy with the lime, finishes with a strong graham cracker flavor and a nice creamy smooth finish from the lactose. It is a perfect progression of flavor. It was extremely enjoyable. I gave this five out of five stars. I wish I had bought a six pack of it. It was really Really good, good job, Martin House. This orange and vanilla lactose sour was very similar to the lime in, in the setup, a strong sour orange flavor. I gave it six out of 10 on my personal sourness scale. And then the vanilla to round out the end, soft mouthfeel from the lactose, it just was great. But I didn't like it as much as the lime. I only gave it four out of five stars. Maybe the most interesting and exciting beer I've tried from Martin House to date. This is their super fast jellyfish. This can is just pure eye candy. I love it. The colors, the little, there's like a little robotic thing there. <laughs> thing. It's a jellyfish. It was great. It's 7% ABV, which is a little high. It was extremely juicy pineapple flavor, leaning on the tart, obviously, because it's a sour, real pineapple, not fake, crappy, overly sugared pineapple. Like it was just very juicy. I really loved this. I actually bought two of them and drank them both on the same night because I wanted another one. It was that good. And I gave this four out of five stars. So I want to talk about Zilker Brewing. This is an Austin brewery, coffee milk stout. This was great. It was like an alcoholic latte, very very milky, um, definitely coffee flavor too, but I just think the milkiness to it was really nice. I don't normally like stouts. I gave this, again, four out of five stars. I liked everything except this. This is the <laughs> Dogfish Head Super 8 Super Goza. This beer is called the Super 8, but reading on their 
website and not only has eight ingredients, it actually has nine ingredients. Things that seem like they shouldn't be in beer. I guess quinoa is a grain and grains are used in making beer. I I'm not really entirely sure what they were trying to do here. I think it's too much. It's so much that it's all muddled together. Yeah, it just wasn't very distinctive. It was yeah, they've got nine ingredients in it, but if you can't taste any of the, ing any of the ingredients, does it really matter? I gave it two out of five stars. I'm gonna keep trying dogfish head stuff. I wanna find something that I like from them. It hasn't happened yet. It may never happen. Sorry, no more of this 15 beer wrap up nonsense, at least for a little while. All right, well, eh, follow me on Instagram. Go check out my blog, skewedfood.com. Just wrote a blog post I feel really happy about. Uh, would love to share it with you all and yeah, keep uh, keep on keeping on. Leave me a comment below letting me know what beers you would like to see me try and I will do my best to try them. All right, I don't know how to end this very well.